Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making this easy crochet twist swancho. That's a mix between a sweater and a poncho. I'm going to be using Lion Brand's new ZZ Twist yarn. This yarn is made just for crocheters in mind. Um, it's twisted in the opposite direction from a normal um, traditional yarn. It's twisted in a Z twist, thus the name, instead of an S twist. And that's going to glide over your hook a little bit easier and cause a bit less snagging um, and splitting on your hook. So this is going to recommend a slightly larger hook size. I'm going to go with an I size hook. Now again, you're going to need to um, match your hook size to whatever yarn you're using if you're not using ZZ Twist or the gauge swatch. So make sure to follow those measurements over on the uh, written pattern. The link is in the description box below. Additionally, we have sizes for extra small all the way up through 3XL on the written pattern. So make sure to consult that if you're making a size other than the medium that I'm making in this video here. We're going to start with the foundation chain. We're going to start with the back panel. There are two panels to this pattern, the back and the front panel. Exactly the same in construction. Um, very, very easy and beginner friendly to make. And then we're just going to kind of seam it up in a unique way to create that twist in the front. So very simple. Just go ahead and chain for the medium size. I'm going to start with a chain of 87. So 87 total chains. I also want to mention here that you will need to size down on this pattern if you're in between sizes, like if you're in between the sizes medium and large um, via your measurements or your normal top size, you're going to want to size down to a medium. A lot of folks also, the feedback I've gotten from my testers is that you'll want to size down an additional size if you want this to be fitted at all. So we're going to go ahead and double crochet in the third chain from our hook. So remember, double crochet going slowly here looks like this. So that's how our first stitch should look. And the third chain from our hook, regular double crochet. Double crochet in the next stitch. Remember, that's yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. That's a regular double crochet. This pattern is going to use all double crochet, nothing but double crochet. We're going to get a little bit fancy with the double crochet here in a minute on uh, from row two moving forward. But trust me, if you can, if you've gotten this far, you can complete this garment. So double crochet in each stitch all the way across for my medium size. Now I should have 85 stitches. We've reached the end. We're going to chain up two and turn. Remember, consult that written pattern. This video is made to uh, help you with the pattern, not teach you the pattern without the written version. So we've chained up two and turned. We're going to double crochet in this very first stitch. Don't skip this first stitch right next to the turning chain. But instead of working through both top loops like we usually do for regular double crochet, you can see that there I have both of those loops on my hook. When we usually stitch into any stitch like normal will have two loops. We're just going to go through the back loop here. So if you see that on top, it looks kind of like a V shape. And we're just going to go into the back loop or the loop that's furthest from us. So you can see that there. There's just one loop on my hook as opposed to two when you insert your hook the normal way. What this is going to do is it's going to create some ridging. It's because it's going to push that front loop that we're not working into forward just a little bit and go ahead and finish out your stitch as usual. It's still a normal double crochet, so don't get freaked out that this is something new and fancy. It's really not. It's the same old double crochet. You're just not going into both loops like you see here. Don't go into both loops. Just go into the back loop. So you'll just see one loop on your hook there when you insert into the stitch. And then finish your double crochet as usual. So go ahead and work back loop only, double crochet all the way across. You should have the same number of stitches from row one to row two and so on all the way. For the back panel and the front panel, we're just going to make two plain rectangles of all back loop double crochet. So now you can see that after we've worked a few stitches, you can see that it's pushing these front loops forward and that's going to create a little bit of a ridge. And as we work up row after row in our turning, um, our chain to and turn method, it's going to create this kind of almost ribbed texture, but it's not thick and stiff like ribbing. It's just adding a little bit of fun kind of long angular texture. And when we work the twist portion of this later on, it's going to add a fun element to that. So go ahead and just continue on with your back loop only double crochets all the way across. This is row two. 
Once we've finished row two, it should look something like this. We're going to chain two and turn, and we're going to just repeat row two all the way across. But here, finishing up row two, make sure that you only work into the last stitch of the row. Don't work into the turning chain there. So we can see where our turning chain was from row one. We may want to make sure not to work into that. And here in the last stitch, we're not going to work into only the back loop because you could see that it created some gapping. So we're going to create a regular double crochet here in the very last stitch. So go ahead and go through the front and back loops on that last double crochet. All of your rows will follow this method. Back loop only double crochet all the way to the end. Your very last stitch will get a regular double crochet through both the front and back loops. I'll show you starting row three here, but at this point you're just repeating row two on and on and on and on for dozens of rows. Um, again, you're going to want to consult that written pattern. Please pay very close attention to um, how many rows you need to work for your sizing. I have some very helpful stitch tables for the front and back panels over there on the written pattern. So it's nice and easy to read and decipher. You don't need to be an expert pattern reader um, to follow this one. So we're just going to go ahead and keep back loop only double crocheting back and forth for the medium size. I'm working through row 73. And this is how my back panel should look. I've finished row 73. I have this ribbed texture on both sides because um, we're just repeating row 2 all the way across. So we're only working in the back loops um, on both the right side and the wrong side. So every time you turn, you're still working in whatever the back loop is for your what's facing you. Now I finished the front panel as well because for the front panel it's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same method. You're starting with the same number of chains. You're working the exact same stitches. So if you need to rewind this when you go to start your second panel, please do so. The only difference is your front panel is going to get a few more rows to accommodate for that twist that's going to happen in the front. So that twist is going to take up a little bit of extra fabric. So we want our front panel to be just a tad bit longer in width or wider, I should say, than our back panel. So if you lay your back panel down, we're ready to seam this up. Back panel down on the bottom, front panel on top, and you should see that your width or your shorter side will line up because you have exactly the same number of stitches in each row, but then you'll have a bit more length on your front panel. Now go ahead and weave all your ends so they're just out of your way because we don't want to be dealing with any loose ends mucking things up. And if you need to go back to the beginning of this video and watch it again, watch how I work those stitches, watch how I start rows two and three, please do that as needed. That's the great thing about YouTube is you can pause and rewind as you need to. But again, this video is meant to accompany the written pattern and be a visual aid, not um, teach the pattern in full without any written pattern help. So you can see here how I've twisted this. I was kind of chatting with you there while I twisted it, but basically you're just going to line up one side, one of the what's going to be the side seams, and then twist it just once, so kind of flip it over to create one twist in the middle, and then line everything back up. So you're going to want to kind of make all four corners of the front and back panels touch each other. You should have just enough yardage. Um, more in the front to accommodate for that twist. For me, the medium size, I'm going to have 85 stitches in each row for the front and back panels, but then I'm going to have 85 rows in the front and only 73 rows in the back, so it's going to give me more fabric to work with to accommodate for that twist. Now to work our shoulder seams, now all we need to do is sew up our shoulders and then sh sew our side seams um, to create our armholes. We're going to work these shoulders first, and I'm just going to kind of speed this along a little bit because it takes a little while and I don't want you to be here all day. So I'm just going to use my measuring tape and I'm going to measure out the number of inches that it says I need to measure out for my particular size. Now this is going to be different depending on what size you're working. Again, it's all laid out in the written pattern, but for me working size medium, I'm going to measure 11 inches. I know that on this video I'm only measuring 10 inches, but I did adjust this after I filmed this portion, so just bear with me. Follow what's in the written pattern. I know that here the medium size I'm only doing t uh, 10 inches, but you need to do 11 for a medium size because after I sewed this up and tried it on and wore it a bunch, it did kind of slip off my shoulders, so I sewed a little additional portion. So either way, you're going to sew what is required for your size. You should have slightly less um, space open for the neckline 
But basically we're going to just mark this with our stitch markers. We're going to count how many rows are on each side to make sure it's even because we don't want to have more rows on one seam than another because it's going to make our whole garment uneven. So just measure two and three times to make sure everything lines up and everything looks nice because it's a pain in the neck to take this out later if you've already sewed it incorrectly. I'm going to go ahead and mark off my armholes as well. Depending on your size, once again, you're going to want to mark a different measurement for each armhole. Um, for me, I'm doing 10 inches for my armhole because I want it to be quite slouchy and loose. So I've marked that on either side with my stitch markers. Now I'm going to cut a, a scrap piece of yarn. I measure about three or four times whatever the length of the seam is I'm making, and that seems to be about enough scrap yarn to sew up my seam. I'm just going to thread my tapestry needle and then I'm going to sew between these two stitch markers on each shoulder area of my swancho. So I'm going to do this with a mattress stitch and I'm having a little trouble threading my needle here. I don't know why I'm leaving this footage in, but there you go. Okay, finally. Maybe? Nope. <laughs> there we go. Okay, finally. I'm going to sew up with a mattress stitch. So just go ahead and create your knot in the bottom of your scrap yarn. And you can use a whip stitch or any other kind of stitch that you prefer using. It's really up to you how you seam this up, but I like a mattress stitch. It's nice and sturdy while also laying pretty flat um, once the garment is worn. So just go ahead and start on one end. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stitch marker. I'm gonna start right here with the edge. And for the mattress stitch, we're just going to work kind of from the inside out. Think of it as um, how you lace up your shoes, how you tie shoelaces, how you always come from the inside outward. You're not whipping around like a whip stitch around and around and around your seam. You're kind of working through what is the inside of the seam. You want to also make sure with this, because you have those rows of ridging, when your seam is done, you're going to be able to see if those rows don't match up. So you're going to want to make sure that you are matching up the rows as you go and stitching through um, one row at a time on each panel, as opposed to kind of not really paying attention to that and then your rows don't match up. It's going to be painfully obvious later on. So make sure you take care to sew through each row on each panel and just make sure things are matching up. It's easy to tell by looking at those kind of lines of ridging um, in your garment where those front loops were pushed forward and you can see kind of what looks like a line, a vertical line on your piece. It's easy to match those up and just go ahead and sew back and forth. So I'm just going to speed this along because it does take a little while working through every single stitch, but we're just going to sew along our mattress stitch on both shoulder seams. I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn and uh, weave in my ends on one shoulder seam before continuing on to the other one. I don't want to try and weave my ends across and do the other shoulder seam with the same piece of yarn. It's going to cause some weird um, puckering and gathering there on the back. So just go ahead and work both shoulder seams and then we'll do the side seams in the same manner. The side seams are actually even easier than the shoulder seams. And I do want to mention too, if you've gotten to this point and your swancho is looking absolutely gigantic and it looks like there's no way on earth I could wear this thing, it's just too huge, this is like a blanket size. It may work out fine for you because that's what I was thinking at this point in the project and then once I blocked it and steamed it and wore it, I loved the way it fit. It was very slouchy and comfortable and could fit nicely over a sundress or over a bulky sweater in the winter time as an extra layer, but that's just how I prefer it. So pay close attention to those photos in the blog post linked below as well as the photos in the beginning of this video um, because if you want a different fit than mine, if you want it to be fitted, you can size down one or even two more full sizes um, in order to achieve a more fitted general sweater type look. So here I've finished the first shoulder seam. This is how it should be looking. Those lines are matching up nicely. Once I block this, it'll look a lot more flat and uh, kind of worn in and nice and comfy. That seam is a little bit bulky just when it's freshly done, but once we block and steam this, it'll be good to go. So I'll finish the other shoulder seam later. I'm going to go ahead and work the side seam here. 
So all we're going to do for this side seam, it's much easier because we're working into the tops of the stitches. So because this is kind of worked almost horizontally, we have the tops of the stitches here on this area that we need to sew. So go ahead and measure another scrap piece of yarn three or four times the length of the seam you're going to work. Go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. And we're just going to sew from this stitch marker down to the bottom. We want to leave that armhole open. And we're just going to start this the same way we did the other seam, exactly the same type of stitch, but instead of working into the rough ends of the rows, we're going to be working into the tops of the stitches. So you can just work back and forth through both of the loops of the tops of each stitch on each panel, again matching up the stitches to make sure that you don't have any weird gaping or anything like that. So just go ahead and sew along mattress stitch, same thing on both sides, make sure that you've measured so that your armholes are the right size for your the particular size you're making. Generally an armhole for a sweater for a size medium is going to be more like seven or seven and a half inches. I'm leaving ten because this swancho is supposed to be kind of gigantic and oversized and just really slouchy and comfortable and I wanted the shoulder to drape really nicely. But if that's not your jam you can certainly sew up this side seam a little bit taller and have a smaller armhole. Likewise you can sew the shoulder seams in farther if you want the neckline to be more tight. It's really customizable and really easy to make it your own. Several of the testers that follow this pattern already for me adjusted things. They made their gauge swatch a little bit tighter to make the fabric thicker. They sized down by two sizes. They sewed in their shoulder seams more. Um, it's really customizable and it really gives a different look depending on how you make this. So um, definitely get creative with it and have fun with this pattern. It's a lot of fun to make and to wear no matter how you adjust it or how you embellish it. I also want to mention that I left um, all of the rough edges unworked. I didn't work any kind of edging around the hemline or the neckline or anything. I just kind of wanted to leave it raw and rustic looking. Um, I really preferred that look with these double crochets and I thought that it looked fine the way that it was. Um, but if you wanted to add some edging, I would do that before you do your seams because once you've twisted this and you've started seaming it up, it's going to be a little bit harder um, to work any kind of edging with that twist in the front. So here you can see the side seam all done. I've only worked about halfway up uh, and I'm going to leave the rest for that slouchy looking armhole. I'm just going to work the exact same thing for the shoulder seam and the side seam on the other half of this uh, project and then our twist swancho is done. I can't wait to see all of your twist swanchos. Make sure that you click that link in the description box below to see the free pattern in full for this fun garment for summer that will take us into fall and winter. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I love to put out new crochet tutorials for you to enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.